Hey guys, welcome to the show. Um, really, really lovely weekend. I've been moving furniture around and throwing away old art. And I realise how how refreshing that is to do. It's difficult. It's difficult not to hold on to the past through things that you've created. But actually, when you when you consider how little of our lives is actually in tangible form, I think it becomes easier. Because our lives as creators are much more in the things that are passed down. The, I mean, decent art, obviously, or art that it can, can be valuable in the future. So I've kept everything that I think might be valuable in the future. But anyway, that's not why I'm doing this um, podcast. So I am taking mum to Soho House on New Year's Eve. And we are going to see Sophie Ellis Baxter. It was so funny because... I I wouldn't know any of her hits, but I said to Mum, oh, New Year, Sophie Ellis Baxter's playing. And mum's, my mum's 80, and she started singing <laughs> the one about the dance floor. I can't, I can't think how it goes. Mur- is it Murder on the Dance Floor? Something like that. Anyway, she knew all the lyrics. She's there singing it to me down the phone. And I thought, goodness, that's weird. She said, yeah, I've danced to it often. And I thought, when? Well, I wasn't I wasn't present when she did all that. So anyway, I'm really, really excited. So the event is um, the theme. So it's New Year's Eve. And the theme is glitz and glamour, which suits my mum down to the ground. But I have no idea what I'm going to wear. So I'm going to be making something or putting something together. So I've started this um, Vivian Westwood copy and I'd put together a costume the other day when I went um, to Soho House for uh, for the Christmas meal that I went. I took everyone for Christmas dinner. A um, bit early, but it had to be done because that's the only time everyone was free. So I put together an outfit then and I kind of got in this zone, this stylist's zone. And what stylists do is put things together. And they're just as valuable, actually, as a fashion designer if you're thinking of an event and the wonderful thing about styling is that you can use separates so this is what I'm focusing on now my Vivian Westwood copy you'll be able to see all the videos as I make them because I'm working on those at the moment hello Romeo how are you are um uh, on my tv show which is over at Vimeo so hello darling the the one that you I've got two I've got two so it's vimeo.com on demand forward slash on demand sorry and then forward slash I serve land which is a bit more um sort of grown up and tattooing and just slightly different to the arts academy but I'm sort of doing both as as we go along so Whichever whichever one you guys want to sign up for, really. The I Silverland one is a bit more um, fashionista and a bit more kind of diary. Do you see what I mean? And the Telltale Club Academy one... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Minor coughing fit. It's over, it's over. Um, is uh, uh, Yeah, the Telltale Club one, which forward slash Telltale Club, is much more about um, sort of family stuff that you can do. So really recycling projects that any age can do, a bit more, do you see what I mean? A little bit more like that. Um, And a bit more music as well, because the Telltale Club, of course, you know, is writing this musical. So more stories and stories, you know, targeted at sort of teens and young adults. So that's the only difference. But I mean, there's so much overlap. I mean, it's just one's life, isn't it, really? So anyway, um, been working on how I'm going to look utterly fantastic from now on. And what I want to do this year, this coming year, is a lot of this upcycling and making fashion statements. But I don't want to sell any. I'm not interested in that, you know, that having a shop. I'm just, I'm so tired of it. Because what happens is you spend more time on the marketing than you do on the thing that you love, which is creating. That's why we're here, isn't it? That's why we're, you know, all the Telltale Club members are here because we want to make stuff. We want to get our, you know, our creative juices flowing. That's the whole purpose of, of, you know, 
being an artist. I mean, what's the point in being an artist if you cannot spend time being an artist? And this is the problem that AI is is bringing in, I think, the one problem. Um, because, yes, AI do a lot of the stuff for you, but it's it's taking longer. It's taking longer to sift through the the mammoth task of finding anything decent that your AI has produced, whether it's writing or viewing or, you know, fashion design, whatever it is. So you sift through it. That takes days and days and days. And then, and then what happens? Well, you then you have to present it, and then you have to market it, and that that takes weeks, weeks and weeks, sometimes months, depending on what you're doing. And all you have to show at the end of it is something that AI did, and it has no, it has no real depth, I don't think. So I'm feeling a little bit dissatisfied with AI just because I've been a slave to it for, you know, for this past year, really, two years. I've been an absolute slave to it. And now that it's even more accessible and it's making fewer mistakes, do you know what? I don't think it's nearly as interesting. So I really liked AI when it was a newbie, when it, you know, had arms coming out of people's heads. I loved all that. And I've I've got about 200 pieces of work that I saved from that time. It's a time capsule of the, the really when um, AI, in terms of creating art, was in its infant, infancy. Yes, I use AI still. Of course I do in the editing. You know, if you, all these buttons you press, they're using AI. And, and musically, of course, I use AI to, to you know, change my vo- vocals. Um, now, talking of vocals, actually, I've got this page on Facebook, Tale Teller Club, which I don't use and I lost access to. And I'm trying to tell Facebook that it's not my page. And they keep writing back and saying, well, who who the hell are you? In... <laughs> I mean, obviously, they don't use those words, but they say, because my, I'm using my birth name and the Tale Teller Club is obviously not my birth name. So I keep having to send them things. I've sent them, you know, my band, um, my my distributor's details. I've sent them ownership of the website details. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm going to get them, be able to get them to take it down. I really don't. So um, I might have to say goodbye to Facebook again because it's annoying me. I don't want to see it every day. It keeps coming up. It's all over bloody Google. So please don't, oh, you probably will now, but if I say don't. But, you know, don't go there. It's it's so old now. It's like a year old. And the new stuff is elsewhere. It's on Vimeo and more exciting platforms. And on the blog, of course, telltellerclub.com. Nice blog. Go there. Go there. I've got a lovely website. Now, talking of other things, website Wix, I've tried to um, delete my website. It's still coming up on Google still coming up but when you click in there's nothing there it just comes up with an error message so google search is seemingly taking a very long time to um you know to catch up so this is this is interesting for me in one way thinking well it, it took them long enough to find me and now it's going to take them long enough to get rid of me and i'll tell you what spotify is still coming up when you put in i serve um and i'm not even on spotify on that old account so it just goes to show, doesn't it? I mean, that was months ago. That was July or something, the the last time I was on there. So, um, yeah, really, really weird how there's this sort of delay with the internet. and But the big companies, because they have such... They're prestigious, like Spotify and iTunes and other places, you know. They, they have clout. So Google shows them, even if a defunct account before they show my new uh, websites, you know. Admittedly, they've only been going for two weeks. But there we go. Anyway, I think that's it. So we'll have a bit of music later on. Um, I'm releasing another Music Therapy Rife Vibes um, recording. I'm going to try and find some ailments that are um, more prevalent. Although, I mean, all the ones I've put up so far are very prevalent. I did diabetes Diabetes cure and arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis last week. 
Um, more tattooing coming up as well. And if you want to follow either of my blogs, please do. That's iserverland.com and tautelaclub.com. And um, I'm going to be going on about my costume for New Year's Eve, um, where I will be um, hobnobbing, hobnobbing with um, Soho House members and, of course, uh, hopefully get a chance to meet Sophie Ellis Baxter. Although, you know, I mean, she might be inundated with people saying hello. Um, but I'd like to say hello to her as well. And I guess I'd better start listening to her music. When on the dance floor. Okay, bye. <laughs>